My 23 female partner, 31 male, passed away and now his parents hate me. My partner passed away due to an accidental overdose a little over a month ago. The day it happened, I left to get coffee and when I came back myself and the paramedics that arrived a few minutes later did everything we could but it was too late. This has been the hardest time of my life and there's been many days where I haven't even wanted to be alive myself anymore. He was the best person I've ever known. We were in a serious committed relationship for just under a year. He had just cleared out half of his condo for me to start moving in the night before he died. Additional info, I've never used drugs. I wasn't close with his parents. We'd only met a few times. My partner had a complicated relationship with them. After he passed, I really felt like I needed a relationship with them. I expressed to them many times that I was there for him and I wanted them to be there for me. My partner had an ex. They were together for a couple of years. She was horrible to him. He hated her and she was blocked on everything. His parents knew all of this. When I gave the parents the keys to the condo, they said I could keep my key for now and be there as much as I'd like to and also said I could speak at the celebration of life if I'd like to and I should be the first speaker. I agreed and said I would love to. They also asked for photos and videos of him from the slideshows they were doing. When I sent them over, they said most of them were inappropriate because you could see his tattoos, painted nails, or he had glitter on. That's who he was. My partner didn't care about gender norms. He loved expressing himself through his appearance. Let it go. One day, we were going through all of the mail at the condo. As we were leaving, I said I'd want to be a part of the cleaning and said that he would want me there. Then I said I would also like some of his clothes, a couple of pieces of art, and his Xbox. Neither of them responded and I thought they were maybe feeling emotional so I let it go. Before the celebration of life, his mom wanted to go shopping with me because she didn't approve of how I typically dress. While there, she looks at me and says, I've decided you're not speaking anymore at the celebration of life. I was stunned and hurt, but I figured they're going through so much. I let it go. I've been sharing photos of him on my social media because I love and miss him. His mom texted me saying she keeps seeing all of my posts on his phone and it was hard for her because I wasn't posting appropriate things. She asked that I stop sharing things where he had makeup on, could see his nails, or things that contain anyone holding a drink or a vape. While this upset me, I again let it go and slowed down on the posting. At the celebration of life, I saw that his parents saved a spot for the ex up front, but not for me. Then the first speaker comes up, which again is when I was supposed to speak, and she introduces herself as his ex's sister. This felt like a huge slap in the face, but I let it go. When saying bye to his parents, his mom said I could take whatever from the condo. A couple of days later, I went there and cleaned out all of my belongings. I took some clothes, two chains, a coffee cup, a notebook, the Xbox, and two pieces of art. Yesterday, I got a text from his parents asking where his vacuum was. I responded saying it had been at my place since before he died and I'd bring it over. When I arrived, I saw that they had already cleaned half of it out. I was of course upset but didn't say anything. His dad then says I can take anything I'd like to. I told him I did take some clothes and a few other things already so I'm not sure what else I would like. I left soon after due to my hurt feelings. This morning, I woke up to multiple texts from his mom saying the Xbox wasn't there and I need to be honest with them. I called her to explain and when she answered, she said I've broken their trust. I've stolen from them and their son. This is the wrong way to end a relationship with them and I need to tell her everything that I've poached. I listed all of the things I had and apologized for not texting her the day I took them as well as not giving her the explicit list when I was there yesterday. She then demanded the key back from me and when I asked why, she said that they were wrong for trusting me. I tried to explain that they did tell me I could take whatever I wanted and I'm sorry if I misunderstood. I'd be happy to bring back anything they would like but she kept interrupting me. I attempted to say I haven't been feeling respected by them or welcomed. She interrupted me again and got even more upset saying that's not an excuse for what I did. After a few more attempts, I came to the conclusion that there was no chance I'd be able to speak my feelings and agreed to drop the key off under the mat. I can't even imagine how hard this has been on them. No parent should ever have to go through this, which is why through all of this, I've kept my feelings to myself and tried to not take up any space. But I also lost the love of my life and my best friend. How do I navigate this situation? Do I continue to try to have a relationship with them or do I give up? Am I wrong for telling my husband that any money I earned prior to marriage is my money. I'm currently a full-time mom to two kids. Prior to having kids, I had a successful career and saved a significant amount of my earnings to provide me flexibility in the future in case I wanted to take some time off to raise my kids. Before we got married, my husband and I agreed to a prenup, which listed our individual assets and liabilities because I had some savings, whereas he did not. As a kid of immigrant parents who both had to work full-time to provide me a middle-class upbringing, I worked hard to save what I could to give back to them and to be able to be more present for my future children. From time to time, my husband and I argue about spending patterns because we have a difference in opinion about money. 
He calls me cheap and I think I'm being thrifty. Example, reusing clean paper towels after drying, eating and freezing leftovers over several days to minimize waste, not wasting so much electricity on air conditioning, cutting or opening up a toothpaste roll or shampoo bottle to get the last bit out, donating and recycling instead of throwing things out in the garbage, etc. By the way, I don't force him to do any of these specific things and it's just stuff I grew up doing. I do give him a lot of credit for understanding and changing his spending patterns, which I believe more accurately reflects our current financial positions versus what he was used to growing up in an upper class family. We have a single joint account to pay for things like utilities, certain household expenses, and some expenses related to our kids. We also have separate bank and investment accounts. I pay for our house, which is jointly owned, including property taxes and repairs, our car, a majority of the expenses relating to our kids, and more out of my separate accounts. However, he believes that I'm an asshole when we talk about budgeting and spending, and I mention the joint expense, which I pay from my account or with my money. I believe that given that I earned almost all of my money before we were married, this designation is appropriate, but he thinks that everything should be considered our money and is only my money in the event of a divorce. To add salt to the wound, my mother-in-law often makes side digs to me about why my husband can't spend money on X, Y, and Z. I am especially annoyed when I see her eyes roll since I don't think how we manage our household is any of her business. So, am I the asshole for calling my money I earned before we got married, my money? He's only mad because he didn't have any of his own money before you got married. Tell me if the roles were reversed, he would not have a certain say on how that money is spent. Also, I find especially weird, correct me if I'm like the outlier, but you're a stay-at-home mom and you still pay bills from your money that you saved prior to staying home. Is he not providing? What is he doing then? So you're doing both. You're providing and you're being a stay-at-home mom. I just find that really... And he accused you of being cheap? I'll be like, no, babe. I got the bills. You take care of our children. Like, you're naturally inclined to, right? And you want to. And you can. What? Imagine... I can't imagine being like a stay-at-home wife and I still had to pay bills. That's not a stay-at-home wife. You're still a working mom, even if you don't think you are. Am I wrong for calling my husband insane for missing my dad's funeral just because he didn't want me to wear high heels? My dad passed away two weeks ago. Before the funeral, my husband, who has always had issues with height, he sure asked if I was going to wear high heels. I said yes because those high heels are the only pair of shoes that I have with black color to fit my outfit. He tried to get me to wear other shoes, but I refused and gave him the explanation above. He ranted about how worried he was about people seeing him with me and me looking taller. Basically the same old rant. I used to suck it up before, but this time I said no. He said he wouldn't attend the funeral then. I was shocked. I called him insane to miss the funeral over such reason, but he seemed upset and said that I was the insane one for refusing to compromise to make it work. We had a huge fight and he ended up not going. We're not talking to each other as of now and his family thinks I was stubborn and should have compromised if I really wanted him there. When it comes to people who are grieving, it's not just like your wife's friend, whatever. It's her dad. That's one of her parents, right? In those situations, you do whatever the hell they want. And this is not even a big ask. She's just wearing shoes. If you feel insecure about your height, you add height and soles to your shoes. This is a day she'll remember forever as a day you didn't come to her father's funeral. How can you have a happy, everlasting marriage when you just have that thought nagging at you? Where as a, as a girl, that's something you'll think about all the time. Like, wow, you didn't care about me enough or love me enough to suck it up about your insecurity about your height that you would, with, you would miss my dad's funeral. But let me tell you this. If the roles were reversed and she didn't show up to his dad's funeral, his family would have a fit. Don't make up excuses for bum ass people. Am I in the wrong for not fixing my wife's mom guilt? My wife, 33 female, and I, 35 male, have been married for four years now and have two sons, three and one. With two young kids and both of us working full time, we obviously don't get a lot of time for ourselves and even less for the two of us as a couple. We've had maybe two dates since our youngest son was born. My wife has at least been able to attend a couple of her friend's weddings, but I haven't had social time just for myself in probably six months. My wife has been lamenting our lack of social lives and asking me to plan something for us to do as a couple because she doesn't have the mental energy for it. A few weeks ago, I saw that one of her favorite bands is playing a show in the town we used to live in before we got married. We still have friends there, so I reached out to them to see if they wanted to attend the show with us. They agreed and even offered for my wife and I to stay with them for the night so that we wouldn't have to drive home after the show. I told my wife about it and instead of being happy or excited, she immediately went off about how we have no one to watch the kids, we've never both been away from them for a night, etc. I told her that I already had asked my parents to come stay with the kids for the night and they were excited for it, but my wife kept going off about how our kids haven't been sleeping well, what if XYZ happens, etc. I did my best to calm her down and asked her if I should just cancel the whole thing because it doesn't sound like she's on board with my idea. 
She said that she wants to do it, but just is worried about leaving the kids for the night. I told her that the plan is literally exactly what she asked me to do, but if she doesn't want to do it, then we can cancel. She again said that she didn't want to cancel. Well, the concert was this past Sunday. My parents arrived Friday so that they could have a night with us and the kids at home to get familiar with our routine. Everything went fine that night, but the next day as we were getting things packed and ready to go, my wife became hesitant. Instead of packing, she was running around asking my mom and dad a bunch of questions related to the kids. I tried to get her to focus on the concert and seeing friends, but I couldn't do it. Eventually, I asked her if she still wanted to go. She said that she wasn't sure. She told me that she was feeling really guilty about leaving the kids overnight. I told her that we both needed to have time for us to behave like adults, and this is our chance. She then told me that I should just go by myself because she doesn't think that she'll enjoy herself. So that's what I did. I went and saw friends and spent the night and had a great time. When I went home the next day, my wife was upset with me. She told me that she didn't think that I would actually go without her. She said that having my parents there without me was uncomfortable for her. She told me that I should have done more to soothe her mom guilt so that she could have gone with. So am I in the wrong? 